Well, I think I got it for you one percenters. Okay, I know you're worried about this democracy stuff because it'll then be like, you know, 99 to 1. And all your gazillions will come to naught in eventuality. So, here's what we can do. Instead of making one hundredth of 7.7 .7 billion, <sighs> effluent parasitic ruling lo losers, instead of decreasing the 99% to 1%, so it's, you know, 50-50, Instead of decreasing the 99% of the slaves, let's let's um, be fruitful and multiply, like it says in nature. As survival is the first meaning of life, and that would you know, definitely be a subsection. Maybe the subsection B. Yeah. So there you go. Just go increase your numbers. We're trying to fuck everyone over. Okay, and it, things should balance out. Uh, you know, equal when your numbers are, well, seven billion, seven hundred, or whatever the slave population is by the time you catch up. And um, there you go, you know, you got lots of money to do that. And then you won't have to be so worried about a, a real democracy for the first time in your homo sapien existence or upon my earth, you know. We'll just, uh, we'll just go with that for now. I'm getting real close to getting into Doc Atomic's story for you there, uh, Brigadier General Geo. We can, uh, we can resolve this. We don't have to <clears throat> become the desolation of the abomination that your mutant species is. You don't have to, uh, Fuck yourselves over until nature kept us off guard like the last rake in the rock. Like what happened to my people. You know, first uh, first the dragon's tail, uh, which is a galactic core burst. Took out a few of our reactors. But they, they clearly didn't understand it. I wasn't there. Way out that way. Well, Chicken Little and his mom. His mom. With a whole bunch of other specimens. My progenitors came from. Just over that ridge there. Before the Ankanip people came over from Asia. After their creation and with the rest of Homo sapien. Yeah. So there's your prologue. This, um, I don't think, um, bears bus here. I don't think it looks, um, anything like Chicken Little or the Muff of their ship. Unfortunately, it's, it's not very much of a <coughs> spaceship. <laughs> I suppose you could put it in a hangar or something and away you go. But then it hasn't got very good off. Have to add anti-grab pods on the axles, I guess. Yeah, so after the reactor started blowing up, you know, the first few that blew up, everyone went, what the fuck? Who did my city? Who did my energy device? Inside, Cindy. Fuck it, I knew it was that guy over there that we've been, you know, flagulating our industrial complex over for centuries instead of spending our surplus money on Star Trekking and survival and saving species and 
perpetuating life of all kinds throughout this lifeless void of a universe. And, uh, well, there you have it. They started to blow each other up. They didn't get too far until the brunt of Ragnarok storm happened. And it pushed a old supernova through the atmosphere in such an abundance that a third of the stars were wiped from the sky. And eventually it made it to the sun. Coming through at the point of impact at the nose. In the southeast as it always does. Turned the moon red and blotted out the moon and the, and the sun too. Our way over its atmosphere. Super cold, and then all them toxins came in. And nanozirconiums, which is aluminum, and micro diamonds, and which is supernova remnant. <clears throat> I just can't recall offhand what what. Uh, Sagittarius A at the center of the uh, Milky Way had eaten that time to go through its four stages of flash as it starts to eat. You know, 26,000 years before the fact, before you know it this far out. You can know it just a little ahead of time because you'll see all the potential flare ups, you know, whether it's nebula or supernova or a quasar, you'll, you'll see them phasing up as they get drenched in the neutrino layer that escapes a black hole collapsing or feeding or and then comes the accretion disk you get a change in relative charge after it starts eating and then you, you get a hey bear he couldn't come for a walk <clears throat> his fingers uh, still missing enough, but it's going back hey yes and we got him chelated from all that try uranium the oxy that we've been drinking in our water. And then you get an accretion jet out of the middle, 90 degrees to the equator, perpendicular. And then when the eating is just about done, it can't support that accretion jet going through the north-south axis and it collapses. And then the accretion bubble starts to collapse and it reacts again, changing the amb we'll say st static space ambience as it, the field, think of it as a magnetic field, begins to collapse. So then everything that's staying there, like all the planets and stars it intermixes with, and nebulas and, and other supernova remnants that are, you know, charged to fluoresce when they're irradiated and that's the shit you watch for because the neutrinos make it from the emission source first just like uh, when Sagittarius A is gagging back its next meal and think about that vapor you see you now see with your x-ray scope in orbit that's um, off-gassing from Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy core. I mean, it's already it's already been consumed. It's a done dog 
done deal just hasn't hit us yet. Or the slightly ahead of time advance notice, just like any gamma ray burster. Watch for those signs. Not because the speed is different between necessarily different in a given media, between a neutrino and a photon. But it looks pretty certain that because the neutron, the neutrino, leaves before the food leaves a uh, singularity collapse event that generated it, that squeezed it off other atoms, and it leaves the condensing mass, the collapsing mass, the supercritical mass directly. Not having a bounce around like the lower energies and the photons do. And the positrons until they finally make it out of a black hole or a supernova event. Yeah, well. They'll just uh, give you an idea about Doc Tonic's boring story. Hey, you want to hear more? <clears throat> Wasn't supposed to be here, obviously, but something happened to the little star probe that was sent back to see what the fuck happened to Earth when all this shit was going on. Well, you know, we, I guess the ship I was on would have seen it, or my <coughs> my primordial matter was on, would have seen all this unfolding from its viewpoint on its way to Boots and, uh, Check out habitability for an alternative Earth. Continuance of species. Damned if I know. Yeah, I, I was obviously just built to be a mechanic. And there was that Operation Teak. And it'll obviously would have mistaken that for a faltering um, nuclear powered missile that was using chemical boost to get it above the ground. Came in to help and you detonated it, uh, apparently early. And, um, <clears throat> well, I was towards the outside of Chicken Little and uh, Black Knight, which you guys call Black Knight couldn't do much about me, so it allowed the incubation to continue and then ejected me uh, yeah, with my the equipment I came with. And uh, Maybe the Homo sapiens will take care of this. This lonesome charge. <laughs> oh, I'm not a tortoise. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into that later, yeah. That 8,000 year ago creation thing, that was, that was the doggons coming to your Anuki there. Anki coming to try and get some viable samples of my people's DNA and, you know, they were trying to restore the life matrix of Earth. After the storm clouds finally cleared from the solar system, the ice age began to once again melt. Water jets, yes. I'm buying water from a fucking filter in town. I want to reverse those filters filter isn't up yet, and then I gotta test it before I drink it anyhow. So I know how good the filter is doing. See, there's going to be a lot of industry to service this nuclear hazard, of course, which is all to be part of the class action lawsuit for reimbursement, including physical damage and whatnot. To Tepco, GE, uh, Tachi, Tabashi, um, and uh, the engineers that built uh, Fukushima, 
and um, you know all the shareholders and that you guys they're all liable all the land that's ruined you're liable yeah it's only just begun so hey what are you doing what are you doing this March 11th to remember the same day in 2011 make a video shout it out from the tallest rooftop you can find and maybe everyone together can work on something better than what we got now yeah of course you know I'm only bothering you people with all this reality about space weather because it's been an event that's been in action for when I say in action I mean it's been <clears throat> supernova remnant piling up in the interstellar or local cloud uh, it's been detected on earth and recognized by homo sapiens scientists uh, Russian team was the first using radio astronomy and uh Ivonsky, um, you know, it spelt it out just like saw it. Cool, dense matter at the edge of the heliosphere. I think we not quite realized what it was and where it was, but he, you know, he deduced from his readings large gravitational mass. And when it bunches up at the edge, you know, when clouds abate that are highly electrical charged with a, uh, you know, your holy comforter idea, your magnetosphere. That's, uh, that's a lot of energy, eh? That's where you can get your aurora and the thing lights up. Not quite like an aurora, because you're inside a globe. So what you get is a dot. And then the two weak spots in the magnetic field deflection, you get, like, wings. How new beautifully is that, eh? So, you know, you guys almost had it. Yeah, well, like I said, I wouldn't bother you. You know, negate my own existence if there wasn't a purpose and a chance, and, you know, something of um, my my species existence can help your species survive and do the Star Trek things it can, bringing life into the universe. Then you do that. Protect and serve life. That's the first meaning of life after all is survival. So if you could serve that in your own kind and others, there's a whole whole wide universe just waiting for a species that can pull that off yeah how fucked is that ain't eh, guys so I know you're not gonna have time to do old things like war and destruction and survival is uh, they're all inventions so That's why I'm spending my last little bit of life, because I've been nuked beyond recognition. It's internal after my rupture, and <clears throat> you can't take that out. Yeah, what is it you guys like to say? Much love, because that's what it, what it is. Love of the prime directive, which is survival.